My name is Rachel and this episode is Cacti and Cacti Advanced. There is a link in the description to the Pathfinder Honor requirements. We are not covering them in order, so if you want to follow along, look at the letter and or number in the bottom of the screen. Advanced requirements will start with a capital A. The word cactus comes from the ancient Greek koktos and was first used in 200 something BC by this philosopher in blue. All cacti are native to the Americas and surrounding islands, with the exception of one, the mistletoe cactus. It originates from Central and South America, the Caribbean and Florida, and is also found throughout the tropics of Africa and Sri Lanka. Cacti are a family or subcategory called Cactaceae within the group of plants collectively known as succulents. Succulents are a water-retaining plant designed to thrive where water is scarce. They store water in their leaves, stems, and or roots. This often gives succulents a more swollen or fleshy appearance than other plants. You know, some cacti can serve as an emergency water source, but don't go trying this without doing your research as some cacti could cause diarrhea, which causes further dehydration. Some succulents spread with stolons. They shoot off from the main plant, either above or below ground, taking root and establishing new plants. And some cacti produce offshoots. Offshoots can be carefully removed with a sharp knife and then planted elsewhere to make a new cactus. Most cactus do not have regular leaves, but there are a few that do, for example the rose cactus native to northeastern Brazil. Possibly the most familiar feature of cacti are their spines, which I kind of always thought were thorns, but that's not actually accurate. The spines are modified leaves and can vary greatly in appearance, shape, size, and color. Some succulents are often mistaken for cacti because they have thorns. Aerials are the key to distinguishing the two. An aerial is that part of the cactus where spines, hair, flowers, fruit, branches, and glochids arise from. Glochids are hair-like spines or prickles, generally barbed, and cactus glochids can easily detach from the aerials and become lodged in your skin, causing irritation. Cephalium is a frequently brightly colored structure of wool and bristle at the growing end of some cacti. It is most commonly found on cacti of the genus Melocactus and can take on a number of different colors, forms, and shapes. The cephalium will only begin growing after a cactus has reached a certain age or size. Once flowering begins, the flowers will form from the cephalium. Some cacti are diurnal, doing most of their activities such as blooming during the day. Blooming uses a lot of water and loses a lot of water to evaporation. So to conserve this precious commodity in the desert, some cacti are nocturnal, blooming at night and cannot be in bloom for very long. All cacti are capable of flowering, but some don't bloom until they're at least 30 years old. Cactus flowers are unique and very complex and spectacular. That's one of the reasons they're great for landscaping. Cacti can produce both actinomorphic flowers, meaning more than one dividing plane. No matter how you divide it, all sections are the same. And zygomorphic flowers, meaning one bilateral dividing plane. For both sections to be the same, there is only one way to divide it. When I picture succulent flowers, I usually think of them like the crane's crown cactus, or the violet easter lily, growing directly from the main stem or an offshoot. However, succulents are very diverse. Some grow their flowers from inflorescences, meaning flower clusters that grow in a specific pattern. For example, a panicle, which is a branched flower cluster with the separate flowers attached by short equal stalks at equal distances along a main stem. A corm is similar to a panicle with the same branching structure, but with the lower flowers having a longer stem making a flattish top. Fruit-bearing cacti produce one fruit per bloom. If you have not eaten cactus or its fruit, I highly recommend giving it a try. Cactus burritos are delicious. Animals like them too, not, not the burritos. I don't know if animals like burritos or not. But you'd think that the spines would be a deterrent, and they are for some animals, but there are some that don't mind. For example, birds and rodents just eat around them, and animals like the camel or peccary will eat them spines and all. Succulents do very well in rocky terrains like deserts and mountains, but can also thrive in jungles. Some, 
like the Christmas cactus, are epiphytes, meaning they grow on other plants, though they don't coalesce with them, which is when two objects come together to form one whole. They stay separate plants, just one living on top of the other. Most succulents prefer a hot, dry climate and also thrive in sandy, rocky soil because the water doesn't pool near or on them. Too much water can cause mold and be detrimental. If mold is detected on a succulent, the affected area should be cut off using a sharp knife. Then the wound should be sprinkled with a sulfur or fungicide. If the roots are affected, the core of the cactus is probably also affected and it will most certainly die. That's what happened to these guys. The only pests that bother cacti, besides my cats, are a type of scale insect of the family Cocodia and nematodes. Scale insects can be removed by spraying the plant with a mixture of rubbing alcohol and nicotine. If nematodes are detected, the roots of the cactus should be cut off with a sharp knife and then it should be replanted in fresh, clean soil until it grows new roots. The old soil should be sterilized and the old roots burned. I hope you've learned something. By the way, cactus is only mentioned one time in the Bible, in Psalm 68. I encourage you to find it. Until next time, keep a song in your heart.